Pom 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 pom. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to the video for what is game user settings, the frame rate limit. Let me go ahead and let's run through the actual example. Then we'll cover the two nodes. I'm going to run this in a windowed version and I've got it set up right now where I'm going to basically apply the non-resolution settings when I hit my apply button. Let's pull up our FPS and we can see in the top right we're running at 60 frames per second. That's what our limit is. Right here, 60 frames. I'll hit apply and you notice it still says 60. I'll change it to 30 and hit apply. Well now we have 30 frames per second for our limit. I can even go to 120. We'll see it change or unlimited. And we'll actually not see unlimited, we'll see something else. And I'll cover that in a second. Basically, we're using the screen smoothing, screen smoothing, frame rate smoothing option in the engine, which I'll show you. So the two nodes we're talking about are going to be the set frame rate limit node and the get frame rate limit node. Now I'll show you how I'm using them in this example, but it's not going to cover everything because this example itself is covered in another video. But basically, the set frame rate limit is a target of the game user settings. So you'll pretty much see it connected like this. And then you type in your new limit. And your new limit is going to be a float. So it can be any value you want within reason. I mean, if you set it to like 5 frames per second, it'll probably annoy the player. But you can set it to whatever you feel like. Zero is going to be unlimited or frame rate smoothing if you have it turned on. What do I mean by that? Well, let's go into, I want to say project settings. We're going to see if I can remember where this is at. And then we have, probably should have looked for this before I started the video. General settings, there we go. So it's under project settings, general settings. And down here we have an option called smooth frame rate. And this is by default. Now you'll see a couple things in here. This is how it comes by default. You're looking at a minimum desired frame rate. You're looking at a smooth frame rate range, 22 to 62. This is why we had a 62 when we had it unlocked. And then you see things such as used fixed frame rate unchecked and a 30 and then smooth frame rate turned on. When we are setting the frame rate, we're basically telling it to use a fixed frame rate and setting the value. When we tell it to use unlimited, we're gonna tell it to use whatever settings we have in here which is by default our smooth frame rate. If we were to uncheck that, then we'll go ahead and go back into our map and we will run it. Now, if everything works properly, we should be able to see an actually uncapped frame rate. We're no longer gonna be smoothing when I set it to unlimited. So let's go to unlimited, pull up our frames per second meter and hit apply. And yep, now you can see we have an uncapped frame rate. We're getting 300 odd frames per second. And you'll see everything's working fine. We can even go back to 60, hit apply, and we'll cap it back to 60, 120 as that. Now I simply have this example set up for demonstration purposes with those four settings. But because it is a float, you can do whatever you want. You could have a number the player puts in, you could sample the gameplay while they're playing, check out the current frames per second and adjust the cap appropriately. You can do boxes like I have done there. Basically, try to give the player an option if you can, especially with faster video cards coming out and more powerful monitors like this monitor I'm on now can do 144 for the refresh rate. Give the players an option. Don't cap it lower unless you have to for some reason. And if you have to, try to find a way around it, honestly. So, well, I, let me see if I can find my project. Um, there's my initial settings. There we go. So, the Git frame rate. This node is pretty simple. Pull it off of the game user settings and it's going to give you back the current value. Which if you can see here in my load and apply giant ginormous node of doom here. Let's see here's my frame rate limit and all I'm doing is getting it. Getting it and then setting it. This is kind of stupid. However, I have found that if you're using the game user settings and you're not really making sure you have correct fresh values at all times because remember the game user settings is an object in memory and only the first time unless we use the load settings node will it keep it fresh things can get out of sync things can get funky i found just simply 
being preventative and getting and setting it basically one after the other to make sure it's correct is smart. For my actual prog program here, I'm basically getting it and then you doing something with it to set my values. But all you're going to do is get the frame rate limit and it'll give you back a float of whatever the current frame rate limit is. If you get back a frame rate limit value of zero, like we discussed earlier inside of our event graph here, that is going to basically be unlimited or unlocked, or it's going to be using your project settings for smoothing frame rate. We could, for example, turn it back on. Let's say we want to do 144 and 60, because why not? We can go back and run it. At this point in time, if I was to choose unlimited, we should hopefully see a value somewhere around 144. So let's try unlimited, pull up stat FPS and hit apply, and there we go. We get a value of around 144 because it's attempting to smooth it to that value because I have smoothing turned on and zero for my FPS value. So that is going to wrap up this video. We have a setter and a getter for the frame rate. Zero is considered unlimited. Zero will be either using smooth frame rate if it's enabled or no frame rate, no cap. If you're setting the frame rate to something other than zero, you're basically using a fixed frame rate and you're setting it to this value here. Keep in mind when you are doing this right here, these nodes, you're going to override any of the defaults.